Praise the Lord. Dr. Thomas Manton IV here, and I have a very, very special treat today. We have some great servants of God here who join me here in the studio from faraway lands like I am. Uh, on my right is Apostle Lewis from South Africa. Good afternoon. Yes. And on my left is Apostle Gift from Zambia. So we are, we are well represented here of many nations. I, ha I had a vision yesterday. And uh, I, I saw us talking about the prophetic office for a few moments, okay? And we'll do that. And then I want to get into something about building altars and destroying evil forces. As you so amazingly shared the other night, if you could recap that, that was so good. And uh, Father, thank you for your word, your truth, your power, your anointing moving through us right now. And I'm going to pass the mic between each of us as we're flowing. And uh, the Lord is the author of victory. We know you are the author of victory, my Father. And we thank you, Lord, for thinking through our minds, speaking through our lips. Give us utterance in the Holy Ghost of what you want to say to your people. Some powerful truths. And a third thing I saw, I was hoping to do some testimonies of fulfillments of prophecies over Kenya and other nations. But we'll see if we can do that now, or if not, we'll do it in another session. Let's do, the, let's do the third part as a financial increase, all right? And I know you're loaded on that, as I am. So let's do, uh, Apostle Lewis, let's do that. Let's do that instead of the testimonies. We'll do the testimonies another time. Um, one particular man of God that was coming, I thought he'd be here, and I know he'd be very up for it, so maybe we could do that in another day. But uh, coming to you here from our uh, humble studio, and uh, we're live to the world, praise the Lord, on YouTube and Facebook. Share this with everybody. Subscribe to the channel. Share with your friends. Put it on your status, on your WhatsApp status. Get the word out there. You know what? I got to tell you something powerful. When you help another person's life in a good way, God counts it as a seed, and he'll give you a harvest for that. A seed, the definition of a seed is anything you have that you can sow to benefit the life of another. Whatever it is, contacts, open doors, a smile, friendship, honor, service, money, uh, facilitation, uh, like you've said what you want to do for me. That's a great seed, you see, because yes, that's something we need to do. There's even things that money can't buy. It's not always just money, but it is money. Money is good, because money is universal. Currency. Currency, the current, like the current flowing through the electric wiring, it's moving. Currency should flow like that. You know, uh, Satan steals, man hoards, but God gives. So the nature of a giver should be in us to give out to everyone. You sharing this broadcast and other of our broadcasts to friends, family members, and other people, people in the business community, people in the government community, people, uh, uh, leaders of churches, whatever, you're, you're sowing a seed. So I just wanted to say that as an intro. Do that right now. And if you're watching this anytime, take the link, copy it, put it in your WhatsApp, send it to your friends. Maybe some people didn't think of how, so we should have an instruction manual on how do you share the broadcast. Someone said, well, it's a good idea, but then just another second you thought of something else. But there's a way to do it. Copy the link. Put it in your, even you can email it to people. You can WhatsApp it to people. You can SMS it to people. Uh, share, 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 share. God is a share. You know, the, the Bible says in Proverbs uh, 20, 20, 1125, I believe it is, the generous person will be made like a well-watered garden. That's one of the modern English translations. King James said the liberal soul shall be made fat. Politically, we don't like liberal. Fat, physically, we don't like it, right? So it's not the best use of terminology. But I love the translation. It says the, the, the generous person, God will make their life like a well-watered garden. Isn't that awesome? Like the Garden of Eden, you're flourishing. Why? Because you're a giver. A giver becomes a good liver. To live well, you need to give well. I, I, I think the, the richest man of God in our generation 
uh, there's a few Nigerians that are pushing the envelope uh, heading toward him. But in America, he's nearly a billionaire. He's had 30 private jets. He's given away uh, 20, I think he's given away up to 27 jets last we heard, given away. And he keeps getting new and better ones. The man is severely blessed, but here's what he says. I live by my giving. I make my living by my giving. I give, I give, I give. I can tell you examples of some servants of God that I know in America that uh, they give like crazy, and now they're blessed. They're giving all kinds of things. They're building huge things. They're multimillionaires. Why? Because they started when they were small. Everybody starts when they had nothing. They'll tell the story. One man, when he had a few hundred dollars in suitcases, and he went to obey God to go to another country. And now he's wealthy beyond imagination. He's built, and his name is known around the world. Another evangelist who's uh, under his covering, under his grace, was laid hands on by him. He's doing the same thing now, but he gives, he gives, he gives, he gives, he gives, he gives. That you see some men that are well to do. It's not by chance. It's because when they had nothing, they started learning how to give. Who am I helping with this? This is the Holy Ghost. This was not in my notes. I didn't even plan this, but I, I need to say this as an opener. So let's move into it. So become a giver. You want to sow into this anointing, into this grace. The links and the ways to do it are on the screen. And uh, they'll be on the screen and you can become a partner with us. I consider anyone that sows into this grace a partner of mine. Oh, yes. And I will pray for you. How do you become a partner? By sowing financially into this mission and this vision. Now I consider you a partner, part of the family, part of the tribe. And I'm praying for you as, you, as your name appears. I'm praying for you to be blessed. And the miracles we can tell about how people have been blessed and been made, been made rich around the world through the anointing that God has put on my life is astounding, to say the least. We'll do that in another session. Well, let me introduce my dear friend. I felt like we should talk about the prophetic office for a minute. I also have a, a great book that I've written that is sold out. This is a full-color book. It's, it has a long title, Supernatural Operations of Spiritual Conquest Through the Office of the Prophet. It's a long title, but I couldn't shorten it because that's what it is. And this has great articles. It's full color. I don't want to open it right now. I'll go through it. Let me see. It's a full color book. And uh, it's, it's sold out. Even this copy I have doesn't have the hard cover. It's just a sample copy that I have. This is going to reprint, and I'm going to leave it just the way it is. Uh, and I talk about the office of the prophet. The power of the... And another book that I have that's ready and hard, co and hard print is... Uh, Prophetic Keys to Successful Living. This is a book on success. For business people, you need to get this. Write me a text to the number on the screen. And just write book or prayer or write prophecy. And we'll see how we can also make these books available to you. And I'll also be glad to hear from you. I'll pray for you and I'll talk to you as I'm hearing from you. By the way, the phone number you're seeing is a 24-7 number. To call, you may not get me, but to write, I will see the messages and I will pray for you and uh, respond back in Jesus' name. Father, thank you for what you're doing. Even through the voice of the prophetic grace, the prophetic authority that causes change to happen. There's the office of the apostle. There's the office of the prophet. There's the office of the evangelist. There's the offer of the pastor and teacher. A pastor is always a teacher because it's the same Greek word there, but a teacher is not always a pastor. But the fivefold offices, these are the elected offices of Jesus Christ himself. He gave us power and authority to teach people, to disciple nations, to raise up sons and daughters, to bring the doctrine and the power of the gospel to people, and to make us to walk in the stature of the fullness of Christ, not to be like children. So these offices are very powerful. And when God speaks, like Amos 3, 7 said, surely I'll do nothing except I first reveal my secret to my servant, the prophet. And as God speaks, he will create things. So I want to hand it over to uh, Apostle Lewis for a moment, and then we'll get to Apostle Gift and uh, just say what you feel about the office of the prophet, yeah, the yeah. prophetic voice. Well, Dr. Menton, kindly thanking you for this great opportunity to share with you today on... A few thoughts on the office of the prophet, the prophetic anointing, and the gift of prophecy. 
I think uh, in, our, in our communities, especially in the continent of Africa, and I don't believe not only in Africa but other parts of the world, there is a complete misunderstanding when it comes to the prophetic. I'm just generalizing it for now because um, the Bible says that we may all desire to prophesy, whether you're a prophet, whether you're an apostle, a teacher, a believer, a usher, deacon, evangelist, wherever you are in the church, even a little child. The fact that a child prophesy or a youngster prophesy or a youth leader prophesy does not make them a prophet. So there's the gift of prophecy and there's the office of a prophet and then there's the prophetic anointing. When the presence of God comes into a meeting, uh, it saturates the meeting and then you can say there's a prophetic cloud in a meeting. So those are the three main categories I believe we can touch on. But the two, the two I would like to point out to believers specifically because we have traveled in, in African communities. When somebody prophesies, they immediately get the title prophet. And it doesn't mean because you can prophesy that you are a prophet. Because the Bible is clear. Now, the gift of prophecy. Listen, there's a difference between the gift of prophecy and the office of the prophet. Now, the office of the prophet is part of the fivefold ministry. And the gift of prophecy is part of the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit. Complete difference. So now, when it comes to the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit, as a matter of fact, every believer who's baptized in the Holy Ghost, my God, I feel like I'm on the stadium now. Go for it. <laughs> now, the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit is operating either one, two, or three uh, in every believer, right? Yes. But the office, the office, the ministry offices does not operate through every believer. But the nine gifts of the Spirit, somebody say nine gifts. Nine gifts. Nine gifts. Nine gifts. Fivefold ministry. And then there's also the motivational gifts. But I don't want to confuse people right now. There's the seven motivational gifts of which one is prophecy. But let's leave the motivational gifts right now, which is in the Bible. So now, the gift of prophecy is not the office of a prophet. And when God uses you under the anointing, in a service, in the street, wherever you are, in the office, to give somebody a prophecy, you must remember, you must ask yourself the question, is this the gift of prophecy or is it the office of the prophet? And then we can even go deeper, Doc. Then there's also the discernment of the spirit. Then there's also the voice of God. So we need to teach people the distinct difference between the ways in God which God speaks. Then you also find the word of knowledge. Then you also find the word of wisdom. These are all ways that God speaks to his people. But there is a clear, definite need in the body of Christ to understand how these gifts operate together. In closing now, before I end over to Dr. Manton, now the office of the prophet will have all these revelation gifts operating, word of knowledge, um, word of wisdom, prophecy, discernment, works through the life of a prophet, right? So, we'll share more on that, but I just wanted to lay the foundation for the body of Christ to understand the fact that you prophesy does not make you a prophet. Remember now, as I hand over to Doc, the fivefold ministry office, the nine gifts of the Spirit, complete difference. God bless you. Thanks, Doc. Oh, my, my, my privilege to have you with me. I, I, I want to uh, have uh, Apostle Gif come, Gif come in uh, on this uh, in a moment. One thought that I had very strongly was the office of the prophet uh, also carries at the height of it, what I, I've, I've said this for years, yes, yes. the height of it is the governmental realm of the office. Wow, that's powerful. And this is not when you speak to individuals, word of knowledge, information, names, and things like that, which I flow in that, and I'm, I'm for that. But I always ask the Lord about why to tell someone their name. God is glorified if you couldn't have known that in his supernatural. But what is actually the redemptive value in that? Uh, uh, doesn't somebody know their name? One person said uh, to somebody, but you were raised by your grandmother. Something happened with your parents. And the person starts crying like, oh, my God. And then someone's telling them someone their phone number. And you were in Australia. But then I saw you come back here. And I'm like, 
they were there. It happened. It's a past event. What is it going to benefit them now, <laughs> you know? And I begin to question, think about this. So one meeting I even walked out of because I was just too disturbed about the whole thing. And I was waiting to meet this, this prophet. He's sharp. He's coming and, uh, from Congo. And they went on and on and on and on and on. And when this man started to tell details about people, he, people almost lost their minds, Apostle. Wow. They jumped up. They started running up Green. the platform, throwing money on the platform. They were like, and I was sitting there like this. And I had brought my whole team of people. I brought like 12, 12 of my people in the back. And I really apologized to them afterwards. I said, sorry you sat for so many, so long. And then it didn't really turn into anything. And the funny thing was, I had a word for the host of the meeting. I had a prophetic word for him that would have catapulted him from a governmental realm of authority, would have catapulted his ministry to another level. Can I tell you, sadly, I never till today got to deliver the prophecy. Wow. Because he called me one time and he said, you said God showed you something. Maybe I'll have to, if God stirs me up to go tell him. But I felt, no, the moment has passed that you had, this was your annual convention. You b spent a lot of money to bring all the people to the KICC center there. They used the, the lower part of the building and they, all the people were there. And I was going to, God was going to brag on you, a, a man of God, and put you up and put you out in front of the people. And it never happened. Because they, they, they had people shouting, screaming, going on and on for two hours. I sat there and I was like this. I was like, I don't know what's going to happen here. And I left without delivering the word. And I said, no, you arrange an event and then I could speak it. But I know it, it wouldn't even happen because it would be a smaller group of people. So there's a time when the power of God is going to release somebody. I'm saying this for a reason. To go into a realm of breakthrough and elevation. I'll give you a prime example. Uh, Archbishop Harrison Nanga, who I very reverently say because he's a, fa he's a father. His ministry has exploded to new heights after he felt led of the Lord to have me come and prophesy and speak in his church many, many times. And uh, the, the manifestation of it. So he, 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 he heard God and he was sensitive enough to know to bring me. And he loves me so much. By the way, he published his book and paid for it. And he also wrote a three-page forward about me and the anointing we carry and what happened in the nation of Kenya and beyond uh, through, our, through our, the, the anointing that we're walking in. And uh, so the, the Lord showed me this years ago, the governmental realm of the office of the prophet will speak not just to individuals but to nations, oh, yes. to societies, to shift things. And now we're not speaking to a few people in a crowd in a church or a conference, but we're speaking to millions of people about breakthrough that they're going to experience. And the Lord showed me this is the height of the office of the prophet. This is what I would call the governmental realm of the office of the prophet. Uh, I felt like the lowest realm of the, of, of, of the prophetic ministry is when you're just ministering to individuals. Why? Because even cumulatively, if you look at it, uh, Jesus said in John 14, 12, greater works you'll do, right, than even I've done. I thought, how? let me tell you something. No one can do better quality works than Jesus did. The scripture can never say it does not mean that. What it means is greater in number, greater cumulatively, greater in quantity, not in quality. Jesus did the most awesome things, and if we could follow in his footsteps and walk in the miraculous as he did, that's enough by itself. But he was in a 200-mile radius his entire ministry. He never went outside. Now we have satellite television. We can link things up and speak to the whole globe. That's the greater works. Okay, so so it is like in the office of when you're, when you're ministering to some individuals. That's wonderful. And I always, I always said this. Let me get back to uh, finish the point about, you know, information being said through a prophet. I said this, so people ask me that. People ask me many times about this. I said, you know what? Here's my answer, and it'll glorify God. If the Holy Ghost himself said it, I'm with it. If he said something, him, if he really said it, the Holy Spirit himself, God Almighty himself spoke, hey, we can never, we, we just receive it. But I also want to look at the, what's the redemptive value 
So this is a, a very uncharted water, I feel. It's still yet uncharted. Uncharted waters where, where people can understand the voice of the prophet will speak to the nation, will speak to the societies, will speak to the whole church to bring edification, exhortation, comfort, new things. I'm reminded of Isaiah 40. Isaiah 40 said, comfort my people, tell her her warfare is ended. And I, I read that script. One day the Holy Spirit told me to preach that in a message. I, and I was debating with God about it. I said, God, I don't feel like warfare has ended. In fact, I feel like there's a lot of warfare going on. Tell her her warfare is ended. Really? Boy, that's nice. Even Daniel, when he was resisted by the prince of Persia, and then the Bible goes on to say also the prince of Greece after that. There was another demon he encountered. If you read in there in Daniel, it's the prince of Persia, then the prince of Greece too. And uh, I said, for three weeks, 21 days. I said, to me, that's like a holiday. I could go through anything for 21 days. But what if it's 21 months? Ah, hello. It's different, you know. 21 days, ah, that's like a, that's like a, that's like a holiday. I, I could, we, we could withstand anything for 21 days. That's the only, only problem he had was three weeks. That's not much. Yeah. But um, tell her her warfare is ended. I thought, this is great. We hope for that. Lord, we sure hope so. We sure hope so. We, we, we embrace that. Go to the end of Isaiah 40, 31. Uh, your, your, your youth will be renewed like the eagles. Your strength will be renewed. And all through there, the power of Isaiah 40, the power of Isaiah 54. What a great prophet. Let's go back to the beginning. He said, in Isaiah 6, he said, Lord, I myself and our people, we're messed up. But if you could use me, here am I, send me. He started from that humble place of nothingness. And God made him the greatest prophet that ever lived, probably in any generation, one of them, the great prophet Isaiah. 66 chapters, which would be the same as the 66 books of the Bible. No one had the privilege of writing that many chapters, but Isaiah got it because he went to God and God filled him with his fire. You know, the office of the prophet, to walk in this call of ministry of the fivefold office is no joke. Yes, sir. As you were saying, everybody, and I can further it a little bit, God, God uh, you know, we see today that, Lord, we see today that everybody wants to be an apostle. Everybody's a bishop. Everybody wants to be a bishop. Everybody wants to be an, a prophet. Everybody's, I, I see a guy that has three people, half a microphone, and three people in a small place, and he doesn't even have a proper thing going, and he's an apostle. Apostle, 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 apostle of what? Very good question. Uh, bishop of what? Prophet of what? <laughs> Prophet of what? You know, even to get to the uh, a height of authority in the realm of one of the offices, you had to walk many years in faithfulness doing even the little things, the little meetings, the small things, and being happy about it. Can I tell you a key to increase and promotion is for you to be grateful for where you are now, what you have now, and say, thank you, Lord, for it. In everything, give thanks. I think it's Thessalonians 5.18. In everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God concerning us. We give thanks for everything. In everything, in everything. Not for everything, because some things are evil. We don't want them. But in everything, we say, thank you, Lord, for where we are. Can I tell you, humility mm -hmm. is a great uh, uh, posturing for heaven to visit you. Humility and holiness attracts heaven. What, where do we talk about that? This is something the prophets should also be dealing about. And I've always said this. A true prophet will not just give words of knowledge and information. In the office of the prophet, as we're speaking about here today by the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost direction, is one who will also teach doctrine and teach the word and have the word of God from the Bible for everything. This book and the Holy Spirit, what's written here, he's the author of both. Anything prophetic. But today we see people that just have, you know, they're, they're just telling people information. I'm thinking, where's the message? Where's the message of, where's the message of this? And I want to say there needs to come a revolution uh, on that. Uh, you want to understand the realms of the office. It's really God manifesting himself mm. through us. On that note, if you have anything you're finding there, Apostle, let me take your time. Let your fingers do the walking. Yeah. Just. Apostle Gift from Lusaka, Zambia.
We're so honored to have you, you. with us today, sir. It's yours. Thank you. The first thing that I'm going to say is that um, um, you cannot fight. You cannot fight um, a nation if you are an individual. You will only fight your fellow individual. People fight people. Lions fight lions, probably even hyenas. <laughs> men fight men. And then otters fight otters. You will not fight the battle that is supposed to be fought by an otter. Then you fight it. You cannot fight it until you have had a backing up altar that is backing you up. That's when you can fight certain battles. Certain battles that we go through as Christians, we feel that maybe we have lost all the times. It's because somehow we have not had our base. We have not had our standing ground. What's something, the foundation that gives us strength. Look at the old from just the beginning of Adam and Eve. Adam had sons, that is Cain and Abel. Cain and Abel always went to the place of sacrifice where Cain killed Abel. It was the time they had gone to sacrifice and then another one's offering was accepted and another one was not accepted based on their attitude towards God and the altar. So uh, you cannot fight certain battles until you have been given a strength equal to what you're fighting. The but So you're actually saying that God can also raise up a person as an altar. Because as a principality, strong men over a city, over a region, God also raises up his strong men over a region. Oh, powerful. I love that. So they are altars. They are men who are called walking altars. Beautiful. I love Walking altars. They are altars. They are men, but they are altars. They are people that you cannot mess around with. They are mantles themselves. He's a mantle. He's grown to become a mantle wow. that can be in charge of the whole city. E exactly. So th what makes him to have such kind of strength is the altar that he has built. So the altar, again, cannot be more powerful than the priest who stands on it. All right? So when you go to the book of um, uh, Psalms 90 and verses 1, the Bible says that he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Now, he says he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High. If you dwell in the secret place of the Most High, it doesn't say he who passes through the secret place. It doesn't say he who visits. It says he who dwells, which means when you dwell in the secret place, you become familiar, you become one, you become acquainted, you become something that is connected to that which you're dwelling in. You've spent much time, you've been consistent, and you've intensified your stay at the altar. Many people, intensified. yes, you've intensified. So many people have suffered certain battles. They've not been able to conquer them. Why? The Bible says, my people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. Certain things, you'll be fighting them while you have not become yourself. Right? In order for you to attack something, you must first become. Say, for example, I cannot give you what I have not become. Mm -hmm. I must become something for me to fight. There, is two, there are two levels of priesthood. The two levels of priesthood. The priesthood of becoming and the priesthood of territorial. The territory of priesthood. So which means you cannot take over territories uh -huh. until you have become. Any man that takes territories. Any man that takes territories. I love what Kenneth Hagin once said. He said, there are miraculous faculties locked up within mantles. Uh -huh. wow. So any man that has developed in his office... Whether office of an apostle, whether office of a prophet, mm -hmm. we have to have an understanding. Mm -hmm. What are the common tools mm -hmm. locked up in the mantle right. of a prophet? Right. What are the common standard tools locked up in the office right. of an apostle? Right. So as you said, you've become an altar. Mm -hmm. 
you've become a regional influence, right? Now, standard that come, what comes with that mental? What, what, what is within that mental? It's not something that you have to develop because the gifts and the calling of God is without repentance. What is common with an apostolic mental or with a prophetic mental is that it influences regions. It influences territories. It influences nations. I remember there was a crusade. One man of God, Prophet Manton, he spoke a word. He spoke a word. He said, God, God said that he's changing the economy of the city. And the people in that small town, they had no jobs. Within the same week of the prophecy being released. Remember now, this was not a prophecy. This man spoke from the office of a prophet. And now, because he was a matured altar, it changed the entire atmosphere and it turned the economy of that town. You know what happened? A factory started within that week. People started getting jobs. Uh, almost the entire youth of that community was employed. Why? Because a mature mental, my God, a mature mental carries certain miraculous faculties. So it is important that we understand that once an office has matured, once an office has become an altar, there are certain miraculous faculties from the divine locked up within. Therefore, it's important that we honor prophets. We honor men of God. That's why they could not receive from Jesus, Prophet Manton. Because Jesus said when he got, the Bible says when he got to Nazareth, he could do no mighty miracles there. Right? But the, the divine, the standard procedure for the miraculous was already locked up within. But they could not access the miraculous faculties flowing from the mantle of Jesus because of their mindset. And if people can only begin to understand what God has given them through their prophets, if they cannot appreciate prophets, they will never receive the blessing that comes with a prophet. The importance of honor. I did a whole teaching on that. One thing that, Je that's so powerful. Oh, my God. Jesus couldn't do, couldn't do any miracles there because of their unbelief. They short-circuited the power of God. But he did lay his hands on people because the resident gift was flowing through his hands and healed a few sick folks by the laying on of hands. But the atmosphere was not charged for the miraculous. The scripture says then that Jesus left there, you know, the spirit of the Lord was grieved and pushed him to go to Capernaum. He went down to Capernaum where the people were ready. They'd heard about the miracles, they heard about him, and they came out and miracles happened. Blind eyes opened, people, cripples walked, lepers were cleansed. And, uh, but there in Nazareth, his hometown, it didn't happen. And didn't the scripture also say that a prophet is not without honor except in his own place? So we need to be very careful about uh, familiarity. I did a teaching on this some time ago called The Importance of Honor. We're, this is uh, a master copy. We're sold out of so many of these. I have also another one on the Office of the Prophet. And, uh, oh, my God, live from Dubai. I have one here I did in Dubai. This is about uh, the Holy Spirit, your ultimate success partner. I look at these, I almost begin to weep because these are messages I've done and they're on. They're fully done on uh, uh, television quality on DVD. We're going to re-release them. But um, the thing of honor, the importance of honor mm -hmm. is brilliant. Let's talk about that for one second. Five ways you can honor, five uh, entities of honor. Number one is to God. Number two is to his word. Mm -hmm. His word. Number three is to his anointing. Number four is to his servant. Yeah? And number five is to his mission, commission, and will being done. The assignment and the mission. If you will take your time to give honor in those five realms to God, his holy word, mm -hmm. his anointing, the mantle, the anointing, the ministry life, then his own servant, honor his servant, and then honor the mission that God has ordained. God will do miraculous things for you. Let me give it back to you. Thank you. Just to continue from where I ended from, I would say when you look at the apostles or the, the followers of Jesus Christ, um, he first walked with them for the period of three years. Mm -hmm. Why was he working with them? He was building them to become. 
Yes, he was making them. He said, follow me and I'll make you the fishers of men. So the first thing before you take an assignment is the building of an altar. Mm. An altar, a base, the strength that is going to make you execute the duty that is ahead of you. So you cannot become, you, you cannot begin to take over what you have not yet become yourself. They were told, wait in Jerusalem for the outpouring. Don't go, wait until they were empowered. That's when they left. Many Christians today, even young prophets who call themselves prophets, mm -hmm. some of them are not even prophets, just as you said, they just have a gift of prophecy. And then they are not in the office of prophets. So they will have one revelation. And then they are not made, they are not discipled, all right, by the Spirit of God and by the man who has been there before them. They have not been discipled. And they will go out, begin to take over territories. You cannot take over something that you don't have strength to take. Many have died prematurely. Wow. Many have suffered prematurely. And we are losing the younger generation because they are not fit. They don't have altars that are backing them to do what they are doing. So because of that, Christianity and the priesthood, even pastoral, the fivefold ministries, the, 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 the office, you need to be established on the altar of God mm -hmm. for you to take over nations and territories. If you don't have an altar, which means spiritually you are, you are, you are natured as a priest, and then also you've got to have an altar of remembrance mm -hmm. that we remind you of what you're supposed to do daily as you wake up, right? They met daily. In the book of Acts, mm -hmm. the church met daily. How many times are we meeting today? When you go to the book of uh, Psalms, as I read, it says, they that dwell, do you dwell daily? No, we don't dwell daily. We are dwelling sometimes. And then the Bible also says that they that know their God, people that know their God shall be strong and they shall do exploits. How do you know your God? You stay at the altar. You stay with him. He builds you. When you have built yourself first, then go. You are equipped. You are discipled. You will win every single battle. David always inquired of the Lord mm -hmm. after he did anything, he won. Before he did anything, he inquired. After doing it, he won the battle. Can you maybe just mention something about the altar and the sacrifice? Can you maybe just mention something about the altar and the sacrifice at an altar? Can you maybe speak on that? One second, little, uh, uh, one, one sentence to throw in here. When you were talking about authority and the development of a man, a man of God, the Lord spoke to me this some years ago. And he said to me, son, only a prince can overturn principalities. Wow. Only a ruler who has it higher than anyone else in the realm of the spirit mm -hmm. can destroy the works of darkness. And this morning... Uh, this morning and even last night, you know, I was going to come to the meeting and I just felt the Lord say, no, just rest in my presence. And I prayed the whole night. I prayed through the whole night, just rested and uh, was just meditating. And this morning, most of the morning, and uh, I saw this, the altar needs to be built uh, and established more. And we're, gonna, we're doing that right here in this studio today. In fact, I'm claiming some of this, this glory for... Uh, our, our place and our, our, our place here right now, too. This is an altar right here. My desk, uh, this studio, this place, our ministry, this is an altar. And um, I, I saw this, that when you get to the point of walking in that dimension, now we go and attack the forces of darkness and we destroy the forces of evil. And this is what needs to happen in this land and before also you, whatever apostle was asking you to share about, but also what you said the other night in the meeting about, uh, you may be on the land, but you, you think you own it. Right. You might even have a title deed, but there's something else going on there. We want to deal with that today. That's right. Very much important. When you go to the book of uh, Sa is it Exodus chapter 20 and verses 24. Exodus 20 and verses 24. 
the Bible reads, it says, An altar of the earth ye shall make to me, and sacrifice on it your burnt offerings, and your peace offerings, your sheep and your oxen. In every place where I record, listen, in every place where I record my name, and cause it to be remembered, I will come to you and bless you. In other ways, you will be having something, and then if God has not recorded his name on whatever you own, it means that there will be no blessing. He will not come and bless it. In other ways, um, everything that a man owns on the face of the earth, it is either owned by God or by the other spirits. Because there is also what we call the spiritual world. The spiritual world will come and dwell on something, not even sometimes legally, but sometimes they will dwell on a land or on a property legally by the previous owner or by the people who were dwelling in that land. They will go and possess something. You will be thinking that this is my car. You bought a car and you're thinking this is your car. Talk about it. But in the real sense, Talk that's not your car. You've bought it, you've got papers and everything is in your name. But there is another entity of an altar, a spirit that has been taking over that car. The car is giving you problems after problems. Problems, the land is not profiting you. The house is giving you problems after problems. You think that it is yours. No, it is not yours. There is another owner that is owning it, which means that owner has got more powerful altar than the altar you have. There are Christians who are living on evil altars while they are Christians because they don't have knowledge about such. So they, they think everything is okay while everything is not okay. Altars control territories. Altars control humans. Altars control businesses. Altars control governments. Governments of today. The ones we have, our presidents, the members of parliaments and everyone, you don't think that they are controlled by their intelligence and by their political power and their science. No, there is another altar that controls, that influences them. One time I had a discussion with a certain minister of finance who came from France and she was saying before she was elected, that was in the U.S. At, uh, at in, in Dallas, Texas, at uh, Glory of Zion. Uh, so she was explaining. She was saying that uh, before I was elected to be part of the government, I used to laugh at, I used to be angry at those Christians who become government leaders, and yet they leave their morals, their Christian characters out when they go into into power. But when I was introduced as a minister of finance, when I was walking in the walkway going to my office, I met a certain presence. A certain presence just met me, poof, and then I became another person. I was operating under the influence of that spirit that rules in that area. So which means otters rule. Men who are not otters cannot rule. Only those who have developed themselves and stayed long enough to become altars. Those are the people that rule. This is the world of altars. It is not the world that is innocent. We move by the power that backs us behind. If you don't have power, you cannot win on the face of the earth. Do you have that altar? And, and we need to take the power and authority that God has invested, invested in us to literally look at everything around our lives. And I'm, I'm, I got a lot, I, 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 the Lord showed me a few things when you spoke that the other night. Um, that we're not looking enough at things around us. We're not discerning the people enough around us. We're not looking at uh, eventual realities of evil forces that are coming against us. We need to go deep in prayer and break these things. And I'm reminded of uh, two men in Nigeria, and I'll name their names, Dr. Paul Anenche, who's a friend, and uh, a new, uh, becoming a friend, Apostle Johnson Suleiman. And both of these men, they, they reference their whole ministry back to prayer, many hours of prayer. One time, uh, Dr. Paul Anetchi was sharing this when he was here a few weeks ago. He did a, a crusade here, and I was there in the front row with him uh, for two solid days. 
It was long. It was long meetings. It was twelve hour days, but it was it was brilliant. He said he was praying five hours a day, and he said he couldn't break a certain threshold in a certain area. And he said the Lord spoke to him and said, "Now increase your prayer from five hours to seven hours." Mm. He thought, "Jesus, is five hours good? It's it's pretty good." We thought, "No, go more." And then Johnson Suleiman, and he said a lot more. I don't. We don't have time, but. Uh, and God bless you, Dr. Paul. God bless you, Dr. Paul Anetje. What a, what a great servant of God you are. You are fabulous uh, and full of God. And that's why uh, he's built the largest church on planet Earth on the main highway in Abuja next to the airport, the airport highway. Yeah. And God told him, look for land there. Everybody said there's no land there. He found the land there and built. He said the, the, the roof alone is 293 meters across three football fields. And he said millions upon millions of dollars cash came in to pay for it. There's no debt just for the roof alone. And inside the building, 100,000 people can sit there. And it is the largest church building on the planet. Now, his father in the Lord, Dr. David Oyedepo, uh, is now building one that will seat 109,000. And it, we found out that this not will only be the largest church in the world or the largest stadium. It will be the largest indoor uh, hall or center on earth. And these, these are the men in Nigeria. They've built their altars and they're praying and they're also uh, taking authority and overruling and ruling over the, the other things in the realm of the spirit. I was thinking about a few things that attacked my life, you know, that came against me. And I mean, I wasn't, at the time, I wasn't watching enough. Mm -hmm. And if I were to go back and do it again, I would have said, well, before the fact of any event that I didn't think would ever happen, I would have been praying more and we could avert and divert those things. You know, God, you know, some things that happen in life, you can't just say, well, it's just the will of God yes. and he allowed it for a reason. Stop that childish talk. We need to take authority over the devil. We're supposed to live in total victory. Amen. We're supposed to rule in dominion. Even the first chapter of the first book of the Bible, Genesis 1, the very first chapter of the very first book of the Bible, Genesis 1.26 says, I've made you in mine own image. Does God have any defeat in him? No. Does he have any lack in him? No. He said, I made you in my, after mine own image and after mine own likeness, and I want you to go and take dominion over what? Everything. The fowls of the air, the fish of the sea, the land, the animals, and every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth, including the devil. Let's reference that to Luke 10, 19. You'll tread upon serpents and scorpions and crush them under your feet, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. But that's if you're walking in the power, the realm of the glory of God. My God, I feel the anointing. Take the fire right now in Jesus' name, wherever you are. Let the Holy Ghost touch you with fire. There are demons that are around you that don't need to be there. From today, we rebuke them in Jesus' mighty name. And the power of heaven's coming to your house, coming to your car, coming to your, uh, through your phone, through your laptop, wherever you're watching this broadcast. Share this with other people. There's, the anointing is here to destroy these things. And God is even going to anoint you to begin to see the enemy from far away. And even the Proverbs 1, 6, I think it is, it says, the prudent one sees, foresees the evil and hides himself. Isaiah 64 even talks, there's even a scripture that says, God even hides himself sometimes from people. You got to watch for things that know how to disappear and also disappear. To impart and then also depart. And you don't want to be in the realm of fools People, sometimes we, we take it as a joke when you see an evil person and God begins to show you signs about situations. You don't take it seriously enough. I want to say take it seriously. The, the most devastating things that ever happened to me in my life, and I'll be transparent enough to tell you that were warfare against my life. The Lord spoke to me, not in a loud voice. I can relate to Elijah when he said he didn't speak in the earthquake or the thunder or the lightning or the storm. He, in the still, small voice. I've heard God warn me about things in a still, small voice. And I tell you, with tears, I overrode it. I didn't take it serious wow. enough. And that thing that was coming came. It really did. And it really happened. And I wish to God, one of the biggest fantasies I have is to turn back the clock and go back to before certain events happen, but that can never be answered. Time is gone. 
You know the old saying, there's an old joke in a meme that says, what would you rather have, uh, to be 20 years old again or to have $20 million? I say, keep the money. I'll go back in time. But guess what? I want to add to the prayer. I won't take either one. I have to, I have, to have something added. To go backward in time but knowing what I know now. I would not give up my spiritual maturity to go back then not knowing what I didn't know then. And God is giving us an answer. In the realm of the spirit, there's a release of the fire right now to help you see things. The prophet, the prophet's grace and the apostolic graces that are here right now. Let's stretch our hands out toward the camera. Father, I thank you that you're going to cause. You ladies, what are you doing sitting there with your arms folded? Put your hands out too. Hey, we have some amen. We have people in the amen crowd over here. And my technical director here, put your hands out. Let's all pray together. How many are there of us here? Quite a few. Lord, bless your people. Touch them with your fire. And cause increase of the eyesight of the Holy Ghost. That they can see the evil around them. And as I spoke this in the, in the church a couple of nights ago, that, that clip is gone on YouTube now. And you'll be able to see it from today. The Lord said, I break everything. And even on Saturday in the business event at the Expo Center, we, the Lord had me speak this. Whoever is wrong, you were there, dear. You were there. You, were, you remember that. The, the Lord said that whoever is wrong in your world, God is going to send the angels to chase them. And who am I, Thomas Manton the fourth, God's uh, a messenger boy, God's messenger man, who am I to say this? Because I have a stature in God and in the kingdom, and God's made this over many years. It didn't come overnight. And I speak it right now. Father, release your angels to go on people's behalf to destroy every force of darkness. We also prophesy over the land of Kenya and Zambia and South Africa and even over to America and Europe and throughout the entire world to the Far East and islands of the sea and the other continents that you will cause your people to rise up in power and stature and authority even in the fire of the Holy Ghost uh, as our apostle was speaking here about uh, the uh, building an altar you becoming an altar that you become like a prince to overturn principalities. And, and after I said that, the Lord spoke to me as you were speaking further on the, on, the, on the altar topic, topic of the altar. The Lord said to me, a king over kingdoms, a prince over principalities. Yes, but the Lord added to it. And my, he sp just spoke this to me. I, right. I had never heard this before. That's right. It takes a king to overturn and change kingdoms. But guess what? We are kings. Amen. We are priests. Revelation 1, 6, we, uh, God's made us kings and priests unto the Most High. He's the king of kings. He's the Lord of lords. He's the God of gods. We have this royal authority, and yet we're not walking in it because we're not exercising this thing about being in the secret place of the Most High. And I'll say something about that. I believe a simple, real simplistic definition the Holy Spirit gave me to tell people, what is the secret place of the Most High? Is it my prayer closet? Is it, yes, it's that. Is it the prayer place? Yes. Is it the prayer mountain? Yes. Is it the conference on prayer? Yes. Is it my place of prayer? Yes. But it's also just being close to God, being close to his will, having a heart and passion to want to serve him. I want to call it like being in his hand and you never jump back out. He keeps you as the apple of his eye. He keeps you in the palm of his hand, like Isaiah 41 said. I strengthen you with my right hand. I uphold you with my right hand. That secret place to be, to be on the mission and the purpose of what God's ordained. And you never get out of it. And you never get away from it. Father, thank you. Thank you Jesus. I see fire, like shots of fire, like liquid fire going out from this studio right now. The angels are here. I just saw one behind the camera and one over here. There's two. And there's a third one over here. The, the angels of the Lord have come to visit this house right here, right now. And I want to tell you. The power of God's going to visit you. Now, every demon that's bothering you, I command it to leave you in Jesus' name. And I'm not speaking to rebels and criminals because they have their own lot to, to, they have to repent. But I'm speaking to good people that have had demons tormenting you and following you. They don't need to be there. From today, they're cut loose and they're cut off. We speak from this altar. You know, when I came from America, Apostle, I'll tell you that you're something truthful, I, I heard all this talk about African altars, altars, altars. Some people even spell it wrong, A-L-T-E-R. I'm like, bro, 
sis, please. It's A A. It's A L T A R. Don't don't. Don't show your ignorance, okay? Spell it right. Go do a spelling check or have a friend who's skilled in English to help you to write it correctly. I, I had one. I saw a church in the, outside of Nairobi, Kenya. They wrote Holy Spirit, H-O-R-Y. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit Tabernacle. And it was a place of iron sheets on top of a patch of mud. I said, is that God's house? They can't even spell the name of God right. I was laughing. Hey, 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 let's get it together here. And I heard all this altar, altar, altar. I, I didn't understand. I mean, I, I get it from the Bible, tabernacle. I understand, you know, Solomon, Second Chronicles. But I, I, I tell you something we're going to do. And the Lord charged me the other night when you, when you spoke this. And I think Prophet John spoke it on, about it on Saturday. Very amazing. I didn't know that came from left field. In a business conference, and he spoke about altars. I thought, wow, we need the altars. So we need to develop this more. I'm getting more revelation about it. And we want to go through the Bible, do some teaching on this, maybe have some conferences on this, where we just deal with altars. We need to do that together. We can do it in your country. We could do it here. We could do it everywhere. And speak upon this and build layers of glory that the devil can't fight. You look at Paul and Enche. Can anybody in, in, Lake, in uh, Buja, with the largest church in the world, can he fall one day? He'll never fall. Mm. Let me tell you something I know about Paul and Enche. He will never fall. Right. He will never. Yeah. He's so thin and skinny, you see, he doesn't eat much food. Mm. He's preaching hours on end in a day. He never stops. He's like a machine. I never saw a man with so much energy. Mm. Two services, full morning crusade afternoon break, come back evening, and then after the meeting, he was doing his live prayer event with his whole television crew that he brought to, to Nairobi to broadcast out to do his program, and he does this every single day. His wife is right there next to him in ministry. I want to tell you, a gift from God is to have a wife that can stand with a man, a, a, a wife full of God who loves the work, who loves the ministry. You're together. What are you going to do? There's no time to sin. You're not going to go fall. I know some men like that, I can tell you. They have a covenant with their wife. They have a covenant with the tithe. And we'll transition maybe into something about finance here. They, 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 they have a covenant with their tithing. They have a covenant with their wife. They have a covenant with their God. And they will never fall. The Bible says in 2 Peter 1.10, if you make your calling and election sure by also doing these things, building an altar, making sure you're living right, you've made up your mind, you made your decision, you've denied yourself, you've given yourself mm -hmm. to God. He said, the one who makes their calling and election sure, Peter said, 2 Peter 1.10, you will never fall. You will never fail. Some people are afraid. They have fear. Can the devil get them? There's too much powers of darkness. The world is going into darkness. The end times are upon us. Too many crazy things are happening. But guess what? The church is going to stand and prevail through all of this. And I want to tell you something else. The Antichrist cannot appear. This great tribulation, Armageddon, all that will not happen while the church is on the earth. We are the restraining force. You can't tell me God is going to let himself be defeated. The Holy Spirit is in me. Greater is he that is in me than he that's in the world. Mm -hmm. Yes? So while we, he's standing here in me, can the devil appear and take over the world? No. No, sir. No, ma'am. It can't happen. The rapture will come, will be gone, and then the destruction and judgment of the earth will happen, which is the great tribulation, the rise of the Antichrist, the great tribulation and the battle of Armageddon and all that. And then God will have us come back. And then he said, he'll even build a new heaven and a new earth. We'll reign with him for a thousand years. Can I tell you, I've already made my appointment there. I heard a man of God say that he saw Dr. Enoch Adeboye, the great 81-year-old general in uh, Lagos, Nigeria, has the biggest millions of people come to his annual conference. He said, I had a vision years ago. I saw heaven and I saw my house there. And I thought, oh, I was praying. This was the middle of the night. I was in prayer. And I was watching him. And I said, um, on the big screen. And I was watching him. And I said, oh, Lord, I've seen heaven. You show me your throne. I've seen things in heaven. I've, I've walked on the sea of glass. In fact, one time in a vision, the Lord had me run on the sea of glass. I think I was running about equivalent to about 80, 90 miles an hour. Whew. 
with speed, and then I stopped, and I slid all the way across the sea of glass, and Jesus and the angels and the throne of God was back, way back. And I've had these visions, but I never saw, I never saw my house. I thought, you're going to show me my house? Lord, can I see that next? We have that place. Let's lift our hands. Father, if there be anybody listening that's away from you, you. and you don't know your, 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 your future destiny like that, Give your life to Jesus right now. Give your life to Jesus again right now. Let's consecrate. Many believe, but really believers watch this program. I wish this could get on the second. Maybe, I think in the future I want to go on some secular networks and just talk to people that don't even know God and lead them. I think I'm doing something more than just being on the Christian programs all the time. But you, 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 you have issues in your life. Get them right today. Repent. Here's the, here's the scripture for repentance. 1 John 1 and 9. I ask the Lord to forgive me of all my sins. Father, I confess sin to you, whatever it is, either something I did by commission or whether something I didn't do yet that I was supposed to do by omission. I repent right now in Jesus' name. Now you forgive me of sin and cleanse me from all unrighteousness. And this is according to 1 John 1 and 9. You need to use that scripture every day. And for praying for things that you want to see happen, 1 John 5, 14 and 15. said, when you ask for things according to his will, he'll grant those things to you that you ask him according to his will. And the things you desire, Mark 11, 24. Believe you receive them as you're praying. Pray for them. And then believe you receive and then you'll have them. John 15, 7. If you abide in me, I, I'm doing it. I said, as I abide in you. I don't use the word if because I'm doing it. You abide in me. And my words abide in you. Mm -hmm. Then you'll ask for what you will, and it will be given to you by my Father in heaven. This is the will of God concerning us that we have every good thing. Prosperity. Let's jump into that. Prosperity. Mm -hmm. Financial abundance. Financial glory. Financial increase is our portion. All the wealth and treasures on the earth belong to us. But we have to get, first get it in the realm of the Spirit. Many times the Lord's had me teaching to paint the minds of people with the dreams and visions of God about prosperity and abundance. And I want to say this again. Every patriarch that walked with God in the Bible were multi-billionaires, even in U.S. dollars, euros, and pounds, not the other currencies. Multi-billionaire was Job, was Jehoshaphat was Abraham, was Moses. Moses was the one who lifted his hand and said, we don't have any more room to receive, Lord, what you're giving us. So please hold it for a moment. Pause, hit the pause button on the blessing factory because we don't have anywhere else to put everything that you've given us. Who has that testimony? Isaiah 60, who has that testimony? Arise and shine and kings will come. Then the forces will come. The wealth and treasures will come. Then the sons of foreigners will build your places. Then your sons and daughters will come from near and far to be with you. Who has that? It starts in the realm of the spirit. First the altar. First the man and the ministry get elevated. Now you can have power to shake the kingdoms and principalities of this world. And God wants to raise up people like that. You say, I'm a lady in my house with my kids. Yeah, you. Yeah, you, you could pray yourself into the glory. A man who says, I've had trouble in my life. I think uh, I feel the call of God. Maybe a young pastor. Maybe you're a seasoned person watching who's in ministry and you want to go to a higher level. It's available. Catherine Coleman said, any realm of the anointing that you see me carry can happen for you also. And through your life, God will give it to you if you can pay the price. The realm of consecration. You want to build an altar. You want spiritual authority. You want spiritual power. Let me quote. I didn't finish with Johnson Suleiman, another great Nigerian apostle. He said, the thing you get as a takeaway from my grace or my ministry or whatever I do is prayer. The mantle of prayer. It all came from prayer. These men are crazy in prayer. They go for hours and hours and hours and hours of intercession. They're ruling in the realm of the spirit. That's why they have so much in the natural. And I think a lot of people don't get things in the natural because they haven't first yet broken in the spirit. Mm -hmm. So, Father, let's pray together. We consecrate this place as your altar. I'm not in any timid, timidity to say it. I speak it boldly. 
This is your house right here. This is your ministry. This is your place. This is your television network. This is your broadcast. This is your operation. And Father, we thank you that the anointing is coming through this screen right now to wherever you're watching, whenever you see this broadcast, to touch you with new fire that you begin to take territories for the kingdom of God yourself. Your business, I prophesy, will begin to prosper. Your treasures and people to help you will begin to come. Resources and provisions for the vision that God has for your life and ministry and business life. Whatever the mission, the career that you have, the calling that you have in your work life, you'll begin to prosper. In Jesus name. And I speak under the authority of the Holy Ghost that this will begin to happen. And Father, we thank you. Ooh, I feel the shift right now. Apostle, I'm going to give it to you. And I want us to talk about wealth creation, Amen. the mind of God and the will of God for us to possess. Yes, because this is a part of it. Yes, now, one thing. I have to say, if you have great vision, great anointing, but you don't have any money, you can't get it done. God also knows about the resources that we need. He hasn't forgotten that. Mm -hmm. He has a big plan for us to have treasures. In fact, millionaires are going to be made in these days. I've been prophesying this. Multi-millionaires and even billionaires. For what? for the cause of expanding the kingdom around the earth, because we only have so much time. If you might have noticed, we have truly entered the last days. The things that are going on in the earth today are, 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 are just not explainable. In fact, they're irrational and insane and very Luciferian and very satanic. And it's just going to keep going like that. So how much time do we really have before the great catching away or the rapture of the church. How much time do we have? I'm not going to say it's soon mm -hmm. because I don't even feel like started in some things, never mind finished. Mm -hmm. We've got to certain levels. We've done certain things. We've been all over the planet. I've preached to millions of people on all six continents of the world, dozens and dozens of nations. But hey, there's many more to go to. There's many things we haven't seen fulfilled yet. And we need to stand and hold fast to the promises of God have you ever heard God speak to you a promise that seems like a big thing, but you haven't yet seen it happen yet? You ladies that are here, you men that are here, a big thing that God put in your heart, but you haven't seen it in the natural, it's going to come. Amen. But we need to be connected with the anointing Amen. because these things destroy the yoke and take us to the next dimension. Back to Apostle Lewis, who has some great thoughts on Kingdom expansion through kingdom wealth creation. And let's get into that right now. I love you. I'm Thomas Smith in the fourth. I'm blowing you a kiss. Blow me one, too. Wow. The angels are here. They're invading your life. Get ready for change. And I want to hear the testimonies. Please do write to me and tell me what's going on in your world in the realm of breakthrough. I want to hear about it. And make sure you plant your seed into this anointing. You can, you'll be blessed by doing that. Apostle Lewis. Well, Dr. Thomas, what, a, what an anointing. What a beautiful presence. Uh, I would just like to say something, that this is a time to become more violent. Oh, yes. We have to be more violent, and we have to be confrontational. If there's one thing that the church doesn't want to do, many of us preachers, we don't want to be confronted. We don't want conflict. And I've had my fair share of criticism. People criticizing, misunderstanding the message, misquoting the preacher. So I want to say this to you, to everybody listening today. There are many preachers out there, and I want to be very bold now. Please go. I want to go with a thousand pound hammer, if something like that exists, without fear. There are many people in the church who make the following statement. You know, these prosperity preachers. Well, I want to say this today. Any pastor... This is apostolic now. This is, rebu this is a rebuke. Any pastor that ever made a statement from the pulpit that says this prosperity gospel, I don't preach a prosperity gospel. Let me tell you today, you have just, if you have ever made that statement, you have just exposed your illiteracy, illiteracy in the word. You are illiterate in the word. It's in the Bible. Exactly, it's in the Bible. So, a man that opens his mouth that speaks against finance and prosperity, it proves to me he has not studied the Bible 
on the subject of finance. If you don't understand the subject, don't open your mouth. Leave it to the men who have studied, who have the anointing to talk about that. You see, many people are anointed differently. They are inspired differently by the Holy Spirit. So now, dealing with this, the Bible says that God, my goodness. The Bible says God has pleasure hey, in the prosperity of his servants. Doc, if we are not prospering, we don't give God pleasure. It's Bible. Psalm 35, 27. Yes, sir. Psalm 35, 27. You that favor my righteous cause, David said, and say, let the Lord be magnified. God said he'll begin to take pleasure in your prosperity. Right. Not just David the servant, but whoever is serving needs to prosper. So now, every person that preach against prosperity, I want to give you an instruction. Take your Bible, study the word of God, and change your mind. Take the rebuke. Humble yourself. Don't use the philosophies of men. The way the attacks are coming, you know, the healing anointing is under great attack. The financial anointing is under great attack. Simply because they do not understand the heart of God when it comes to prospering his people. As a matter of fact, there's a scripture in Ecclesiastes that says that man money answereth all things. If you don't have food in the house, what do you need? Money. If you don't have school fees, what do you need? Money. If you can't pay your rent, what do you need? Money. Let's read the scripture quickly. In the book of Ecclesiastes, uh, chapter 10, 19. It says, let's read the B part. But money answers all things. Very clear. And then also, in the Old Testament, the Bible says that God wants us to prosper. He says that a good man leaves an inheritance to his children's children. So now, if I'm a good man, I am supposed to build generational wealth. What? Generational wealth. So my question now to the body of Christ, if that is the word of the Lord, why are we fighting and opposing preachers who declare the word of the Lord on biblical wealth creation. As a matter of fact, Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 18 says, For thou shalt remember the Lord your God, for it is he that gives you power to create wealth. Doc, there's a power. Yes. There's an anointing yes. to create wealth. Yes. God bless you. Now, now uh, uh, Acts 1.8 says, You'll receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you to be my witnesses in Jerusalem, and then Judea, and Samaria, and to the uttermost parts of the earth. The same word, power, yes, is the same, in Acts 1.8, is the same word, power, in Deuteronomy 8.18. Mm -hmm. Power to get wealth. It's the same word. It's the same attribute of the Holy Spirit. Oh, yes. And I want to say something from a tender heart as a man, as a pastor, which I am. A, a lover of the sheep, a lover of the people of God, a lover of God's uh, people, a lover of God, and a lover, and a, a one who feels compassion for people's down sittings and uprisings. I want to see people rise up. I don't want to see people struggling and suffering. One of the reasons why great men with fire that have a revelation and anointing to speak in certain areas, yes, why they do it, why we do this, why we do even this broadcast is because we love you and we want to help you. We want to see your life change for the better. We're not here for ourselves. He, let me tell you something about the anointing. The anointing means to, uh, word, uh, def one definition of the anointing means to smear upon mm. the oil, the oil to bless, to heal, to bring change. A purpose, a definition of the anointing, what it does and its purpose is to provide what's needed and to help the person who's afflicted come out of that affliction. Mm -hmm. You're lacking in finance. You need to increase. You're, you're sick in your body. You need healing. Mm -hmm. You're troubled by devils. You need deliverance. Right. 
You've been abused. You've had a, a rough upbringing. You've been rejected by a father or a mother or people. You've had problems in school. You've had problems in society. Or you've had issues come against your life. These scars can stay with you even in, way into your adulthood, and they still need to be dealt with. I call this personal deliverance. I started to teach others. I'm going to do some more messages on this. Personal deliverance we need. And I shared some testimonies in last Sunday's long, lengthy teaching on, it's entitled Personal Deliverance. You'll see it on YouTube and Facebook now. And uh, I began to talk about times when I saw the power of God hit someone that was an adult, looked very well, very intelligent, but inside they were all insecure because they came from bad experiences that they still need to be delivered from. The, anoint, the same anointing that will save a man's soul and bring him into salvation is the same anointing that will deliver someone from all these afflictions. And it's the very same anointing of the Holy Ghost that will talk about how you can increase and prosper in life to be blessed even financially. It's the same voice. Doc, I would just like to now, uh, you know, sometimes when the anointing is in a place like now, especially having the evangelistic anointing, you tend to run. But let me just uh, retract and just become about this one. Did you know that, and this is something that God laid in my heart, Doc, that there is a system that God has given to mankind that we should live by in order to prosper. Let me say this again, ladies. There's a system which God has given to the body of Christ whereby we should live in order to prosper. If we don't apply the rules of that system, we shall not prosper. Somebody say system. system. Can I hear you system? So now, I want to make this very short in about two minutes. Let's read in uh, the book of Genesis chapter 1, verse 28. And God blessed them and said to them. Now the word bless means empower. Yes. To what? Empower to prosper. So now, the... Empowered to fail. Amen. Say, that. Say it again. Curse to curse means to be empowered to fail. Empowered to fail. Mm -hmm. But to bless means to be empowered to prosper. That's right. Amen. So to be blessed, when God said God blessed them, is the meaning of that is you are empowered to prosper. Yeah. All right? So now the entire church, somebody say the entire church, the entire church. is empowered to, prosper, empowered to prosper. But not everybody walk in prosperity. Clap for Jesus. Are you with me? The blessing is upon everyone. Hey! I've got something here now. The blessing is what? The blessing is upon the entire church. But not the entire church walk in the blessing. Now, here's the secret. You might have the blessing upon your life. But there's a secret. In order for you to activate the blessing which is already upon your life. Somebody say, which is already upon my life. You know, you can have a million dollar anointing upon your life and still pray for a bread. Why? Because the blessing is already there. But there are certain principles needed to activate the blessing which is already on you. Doc, that's why I've noticed that people that only focus on prayer Never step into the blessing. Because prayer is not the only principle that God has called us to live by. What prayer does, prayer opens up. Somebody say opens up. It opens the heavens. Okay, God answers prayer. But let me stand. <laughs> what activates the blessing. Somebody say activates the blessing. Say the blessing is on me. But now it needs to be activated. Yes. All right? You are wealthy. You are wealthy. You are blessed. I am blessed. Doc is blessed. The entire church is blessed. Yes, yes. Ah! But here's the thing. Verse 29. Let's read it. Powerful. Don't forget this. And God said, Behold, I've given you every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree in which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed. And to you it shall be for meat. He says the seed shall what? God says the seed shall what? Shall be for? For meat. Somebody say meat. Now the, 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 the meaning of the word meat 
is it shall be to you for provision. The seed will bring provision. The problem is, it shall be to you for meat. Right? God made provision. Right in the Bible. There's a system. He says the blessing is on you. But now, take the seed. Hey, my God. He said, take the seed. Because the seed shall be for meat. In other words, the word meat, it shall be for provision. Unless you have the seed. Unless you activate the blessing with the seed. There shall be no meat. In other ways, Apostle, uh, you're saying that yeah. there is a frequency yes, that must allow you to access the blessings of God. Or there is a system, and the system is like a phone. I have a phone, yes, this phone. If it doesn't have the system of WhatsApp, I will not be able to communicate with the people who have WhatsApp. So a blessing is like a system that must be downloaded in you and be installed in you. And it begins to operate through you. That's when it will be beneficial to you. If you have not downloaded the system uh -huh. of being blessed yes, by God and activate that system, the blessings will not come. Here's the secret. The blessing, when you are a child of God, it must not be downloaded. It has already been downloaded. All of us walk with that blessing. But what activates the blessing is the seed. And that's where a lot of us are tempted. We are not... Dr. Mike Murdoch, my dear beloved friend and apostle... He, he said something. Some of the poorest people he's ever seen were intercessors. Focus on the spiritual, praying all the time, but not walking according to the principles. And then he said, Jesus is uh, you, two ways you can learn, by expertise or by experience. Wow. The school of hard knocks, the hard road, or wisdom. Wow. And uh, wisdom is a principal thing, Proverbs 4 said. And then he said, Jesus is the Savior, but he has a system. He's the person of, 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 of uh, he's the personhood of the Messiah, but he has principles to live by. He's the love of God, but he also has the law of God. And this is, Akabasha, this is missing in a lot of people. They don't understand how to operate in biblical economics. Can I tell you, the Lord shook me to the core of my being, and I won't tell you the, all the details about it. For time's sake, it's a, quite, a, quite a bit of revelation, but about the tithe. Let's talk about the tithe. Mm -hmm. And the Lord showed me, you, I can never bless a man or a woman. I want you to hear me and hear me well. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying this from, as a novice. I'm saying this as a very experienced, seasoned man of God. Mm -hmm. God will not be the author of giving you great treasures if you can't be trusted with the little. Jesus said uh, through Paul, so sparingly, you'll reap sparingly. So bountifully, you'll reap bountifully. But the Bible talks about the tithe. Wow. And he said in Malachi 3, 8, you've robbed me, even this whole nation. They said, where have we robbed you? In tithes and offerings. And he said, so therefore, bring the tithe into the storehouse that there'll be meat in my house. And prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, and see if I'll not open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there not even be room enough to receive it, and I will pour you out, pour out to you, but also pour you out as a blessing. There's a double entendre there. I like it. And um, it means use of the word in two realms. I'll pour out blessing to you, but I'll also pour you out as a blessing because you're so blessed. You're a blessing factory. You're an altar, Apostle Give. You're an altar walking in the earth full of blessing. And he said, then I'll rebuke the devourer for your sake and make you even a delightsome land for me, mm -hmm. says the Lord of hosts. Uh, somebody said that's Old Testament. Well, look at Hebrews 7. Read Hebrews 7. Look at where even the, the mention of Melchizedek was named. Melchizedek was likened unto the Lord Jesus Christ, one who had no origin of natural birth like, like Jesus in, 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 in part of it. He came through the womb of Mary. But who was this mysterious Melchizedek? 
the receiver of tithes, the high priest who stood in the realm of the spirit to receive from Abraham, Abraham and then bless his life. And the Bible says in Genesis 12, 1, mm -hmm. Abram was in Terah, his father's house. The Bible never calls Terah a good man. The Bible never says Terah was a good man. No, they were from the Ur of Chaldees. They were idol worshipers. They were moon worshipers, strange people. Abram was there, tied to the family for a long time. And then God said in Genesis 12, 1, get up from here and go out to a place where I'll show you. And Abram obeyed God and began to get blessed from that day. Go one chapter over, Genesis 12, 1. Now go to one chapter plus one verse, Genesis 13, 2. And Abram was made very rich in cattle, in livestock, in lands, in gold and silver. And I want to tell you something. There was a study done by some historical scholars. They wanted to find out who was Abram? How did he live in the land? How, what was his wealth, what would his wealth add up to in summation in today's money? And I believe this study was done back in the 1970s, which is a long time ago economically from now. It's 50 years ago. Uh, uh, you know, if, if I have the, the, the time frame correct. And they found out, they, they figured out his land, his cattle, his servants, his operations, the gold and the silver and the real estate, would probably be worth more than 200 billion U.S. dollars today. And this was 50 years ago, 40, 50 years ago. Now that would be double today. So Abraham was the half a trillion dollar man. Solomon was the multi-trillionaire. Even the gold... You know, the Bible says in the, the, the footnote of 1 Kings 10, 3, I think it was now, or was it in the third? It's in the book of Kings. I don't want to take time. We'll, we'll put the scripture up later. But it says that Abram, uh, 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 Solomon received in one year the treasuries of gold worth 3.83 billion U.S. dollars, almost $4 billion. How much is that in Kenyan shillings? How many trillions? There's nobody even that rich in Kenya that we know about. And these were the patriarchs of the Bible. Let me tell you one answer. Someone said, how can I live like Solomon? How can I build a temple like that? How can I have the Queen of Sheba come to me and she passes out and faints because of the level of splendor she saw in my palace? Who lives like that oh in our town? In Wiki and Kariobangi and uh, hey ya. Uh, Buru Buru and Kawiguare and who lives like that? Nobody. But I want to tell you how Solomon did it. Let's, let's try to make it as practical as we can, apostles. That people can understand how to begin to walk in this walk. There was one answer. Mentorship. Solomon followed his father, David. Mm -hmm. David was his reference point, and David was a multi-billionaire. If you think he wasn't, God told him, he said, because of the blood on your hands, I'm not going to let you build the temple, but I'm going to choose your son Solomon to do it. David got mad. He said, Lord, my passion is to build you a house. I've lived all this time. I, you're taking that privilege away from me. He says, well, guess what? Sarcastically, basically, if you read the scripture and you look, just read a little bit as a thinking man, he sar sarcastically said back to God, you say I'm a bloody man? Well, let me go shed more blood and take the spoils. If you won't let me build the house, I'll go get the treasures to pay for it. My goodness. And Solomon saw all that as a boy. Now he said, I'm going to be like my daddy. How did Paul and Enche, again, in, in Abuja, Nigeria, build the largest church facility on planet Earth that seats 100,000 people? His father in Lagos, David Oyenapo, has half a million people showing up every week at their church on 10,000 hectares of land. They said in this place, it said the buildings grow faster than the trees. And he's looking to build more. And now he's going to build the largest indoor facility on the planet. That'll seat with 109,000 seats inside the building. Paul Inenche had a reference point. 
How is he able to build that? This is a problem. No one has a reference point. You see a poor pastor who's shucking and jiving and kicking rocks and, and taking matatus and uh, shuffling around and maybe he's half corrupt and he's not a straight guy and he tells lies and he's not reliable and he keeps breaking the laws of God. Maybe he's not a tither. Mm. He doesn't have a father. Strong stuff. Then, you know, how is he going to rise to a higher level? I heard Dag Hewitt Mills and also Paul Enche. Paul Enche told the story in the crusade. I, I got to say this. He said, wow, uh, help me get it. He said, Lord, help me. He said, um, there was a man that came to him with a lot of titles, a lot of accolades, like he has to see Dr. Enche. The staff saw him. They thought, ah, oh, this guy. Let's see if we can bring him in to meet with uh, our dad for a, f a few moments, yeah? He came and sat with him. He, he be Paul and Etchie began to ask him questions. This is really dangerous, what I'm going to say. Who's your spiritual father? The man had no answer. What have you done in the realm of this and this and this and this? The man had no answer. Then he thought, you know what? I think you should stop aggrandizing yourself and humble yourself. I tell people all the time, you want to say you're an apostle? Prove it. Mm -hmm. Where are the marks of the apostle? Yes, Where are the scars and stripes on your body? Wow. Like Paul had, like I have. You think I haven't been through things? Let me tell you something. I've been through things in my walk, apostles. I've been through things in my journey that I wouldn't wish upon a, a vicious enemy, never mind a friend. Mm -hmm. I was prophesying in Oklahoma City in a conference, some great words, and uh, I told the pastor, I said, you're going to be in the White House. People gasped. He gasped. They were like, how? Two weeks later, he was sitting in the Lincoln Room in the White House with President George Bush mm. having dinner. He was invited sovereignly. I heard the Lord speak that, and I spoke it like that, a detail like that. And I said it will be soon. I even said it will be soon. What if it doesn't happen? What if it does? I heard God. It's going to happen. And somebody came up to me and asked me, and they said, Prophet, how do you hear God like that? How does he talk to you like that? How do you walk in this anointing? I would like to have that anointing. And I looked at the person, and I put my head forward toward them, and I whispered to them. I said, dear, it is very, very expensive. And I saw this person. I was reminded of the rich young ruler. Kind of bowed their head and just disappeared out of the side door and walked away. I thought. And I'm reminded back again to Catherine Coleman, what she said. Anything you see God doing, these miracles, this, any realm of anointing. A.A. A. Allen talked about it. The great healing evangelist, the price in the price of spiritual power. That message is on YouTube. Look up A.A. A. Allen, price of spiritual power. He teaches about how he got to start to walk in this. You know, these men have paid a price. Mm -hmm. Look at David. He was fighting the lion and the bear out in the field as a young boy. And then Goliath showed up. And he decided to be the one to take him on. You think he didn't do anything to get where he was going? And then Solomon was born. Now Solomon, from his birth, began to watch his daddy do all this. Paul Enche was watching his father, David Oyedipo, build all this great ministry. And he was a son there. And he said, I can also do this. David Ibiomi in Port Harcourt, Nigeria, now is building a huge facility. He also relates back to the grace. See, in Nigeria, they do something that Kenyans don't do that I've seen. Kenyans want to fight each other, hate each other many times. Too much, too much. I'm not saying it's all like that, but I've seen it too much. In Nigeria, they have this thing about honor. Wow. Honor, honor, honor. I thought so much about it, I did a whole teaching on it. I have many on this, the importance of honor. Honor the father. Have a spiritual father. You know, Paul Enetje gave the testimony, and he said it just two weeks, three weeks ago when he was here. He said this, he said, I, I, people come up to me and say, how do you sit for the whole week in the Shiloh Conference? You're there from the morning, the early prayer, all the way to the night. You're taking notes. You don't move. You don't go networking with people. You don't walk around like you're somebody. You sit down like a disciple at your father's feet and listen. And you wonder why he got to where he is. So we don't have the reference point. How can we tap into the grace if we don't respect it? I got to say some, another quote from my dear friend, Dr. Mike Murdoch. He said, the anointing you respect is the anointing you attract. The anointing that you celebrate is the anointing that can operate in your life. 
And people want to criticize prophets. They want to criticize apostles. They want to criticize the message of abundance and all that. They don't understand what they're doing. They're disrespecting God, and God walks, backs up from them. And then they wonder why they have trouble. You're not called to fight your brethren. You're not called to fight your brother. You're called to celebrate your brother. And Psalm 133 talked about, you want to talk about being blessed financially? Uh, Psalm 133, where I see unity, I'll command my blessing there. Where there's unity. The Acts of the Apostles, in the, in the book of Acts, we see they had all things in common. And they were all blessed beyond measure. People were selling real estate and bringing the proceeds and dropping the cash. They had stacks of cash, stacks of gold coins or gold pieces or whatever, whatever the commodity of the day. In abundance, in the houses, not even in a big church facility. In their houses. When they had no lack. Why? Because they walked in unity and fellowship and prayer together. This needs to come back. This needs to come back. This needs to come back. But we need a reference point. You need a spiritual father. So I'm going to tell you, the Lord dealt with me about spiritual fathers, mentors, lineage and connections. The Lord really dealt with me about this. I'll talk about it in another time. And also about tithing. God said to me, he said, you want me to bless you and make you a millionaire, but yet you don't tithe. Mm -hmm. How am I supposed to break my own law, which I wrote and said it can never be reversed, Heaven and earth will pass away, but my word will never pass away. Numbers 23, 19, I'm not a man that I would lie, the son of man that I had to repent of something. Mm -hmm. I can't tell a lie. What I wrote in my word, do this and you'll get blessed. Don't do it, you'll be cursed. A curse is added to your financial life when you're not a tither mm -hmm. or a giver. Now, guess what? You don't even give until you're at the 11th percent. 10% of what you receive is what you pay as your tithe. I want to call it kingdom tax, insurance on your life, the portion that's holy unto the Lord. The 10% of the hundred is not yours. The Bible says in Genesis 26, it's holy unto the Lord. The tithe is the Lord's. If you keep it in your pocket, it'll burn holes in your pocket. Haggai 1 said what? Come on, I'm on fire here. Karabashata. Are you getting blessed? Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Give me some hallelujah emoji hands on the screen, somebody. Amen. Share this with everybody. You got to share this. You have to share this broadcast. I command you in Jesus' name, share this. Now, uh, Haggai 1 says, you have, you have bags with holes and pockets with holes. Why? Consider your ways. God is not responsible or to blame for anything you do wrong. It's you standing in the need of prayer. It's me standing in the need to take responsibility. <laughs> you find, I want to tell you, I did a teaching a few weeks ago, and it's on YouTube and on Facebook. You'll see it. It's, it's a title, 50, and I just did the part one because I, I need to finish it. I didn't finish all of it. 55 things God spoke to me on a Sunday morning. We were driving around to different events in the city with my driver. We were going places, and God, I didn't tell them that God was talking to me, but I was taking notes, mm -hmm. writing things. I wrote 55 things God said to me. 55 realities that come in your life through, with spiritual maturity. I wouldn't trade that for anything. But one of them is to understand the principles of the biblical economic system. Okay? To be a tither. To be a giver. To have a spiritual father. To be connected somewhere. To be covered. Also, the Bible goes a step further. It's crazy. It, in, this is wild now. All the single people can say amen or ouch. Or woohoo, or whatever. Oh, I hope so. Help me, Jesus. You know, woohoo, we spell W O O apostrophe H O O exclamation point. Woohoo! Hey, you gotta say, the Bible says oh, a man uh, shouldn't be alone, yes, sir. but he needs a help meet. Oh, it's painful. And then uh, he needs a help meet to help him with the work. Yes, 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 yes. And then Genesis, uh, excuse me, Proverbs 18:22. When a man finds a wife, not a knife. When a man finds a wife, not strife. When a man finds a wife, he gets a good life. New angels, somebody said, are released. New favor, new graces released from the Lord that you haven't gotten yet. And we need that help. You see all the principles. So I, I tell you, a, a little summation point that a theme that can be thread through all of what we said from beginning till now is this that you need to operate according to the principles of God. God, has, God is a savior, he, but he has a system. 
He's the love of God, but he's also the law of God. He, he has a system. He has principles. He's the, he's the personhood of, 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 of God Almighty as the Savior, but he's, he also has principles to live by. A lot of people are breaking those laws, and they wonder why they're not blessed. They're always crying. They have a need. They're always fighting a devil somewhere. When God said, if you just tithe, I'll rebuke the devourer. Mm -hmm. What's been devouring your life? And I know. I've seen it. Did you see devouration, devouring, devouring going on? If I can make another word, devouring, uh, devouration, <laughs> devouring going on in your life. You, things are being destroyed and attacked and eaten at. It doesn't have to happen because God said, you give me my tithe and I'll rebuke that devil for you. And some devils you won't have in your world. Some things you'll be protected by. Back to the altars, apostle. The altar. The, the power of a spiritual authority to look at everything and begin to break things in the realm of the spirit. But also, in the midst of walking in that, we must be walking in obedience to the principles we find. Now, either God lied or he didn't. He cannot lie. Numbers 23, 19 said, he, when he told these things, he's not telling a story. And you may not like everything that you see written as a law, as a principle to work by, but it is absolute truth. If you'll just humble yourself, sacrifice yourself, and obey it. Someone said, I, I, I don't have enough money to tithe. You don't have enough money not to tithe. You're still broke. Take the 10% and hurt yourself. And say, I got to take this out and give it to God. Begin from now. Father, every non-tither, every person that's neglected to tithe or did at one time and they stopped or they hit and miss or they stop and go and they, relent, they refrain from doing it, let, let us all repent today in Jesus' name and make sure that 10% covenant of everything that comes to us, it really belongs to you according to Scripture. Mm -hmm. And we can't pray about that, to overrule that, override that, have another way. God said, I already said it. Mm -hmm. Now you obey it or not. Praise the living God. What a word, what a presence, what an atmosphere that is so intense. There's something that is happening here. Wherever you're watching us from, there, is, there has been the discussion of the prophetic, the blessings, the altar, a combination of all, the tithe. Everything is coming as a package. It is part of the prosperity system that God offers humanity. If you can download or make this system activated in your life, your life will never be the same. These principles are needed for you to acquire them. You need to just obey the Lord. By the way, Dr. Poyen is my spiritual father. Wow. Yeah. He's my spiritual father who has uh, mentored me. The time I met him and I became his son, my life has never been the same. My life has never been the same. He's been a blessing that has been very big. Many times, this is him when he came into Zambia, and this is oh. me standing as a bodyguard there. That's and you here. That's me here. Oh, yes. Yes. Let me show. Thank I you. I don't know if you can see this, but... Uh, Dr. Paul Anetje and his beloved wife. She's always with him, by the way. Yeah, yeah. And then his uh, apostle gift standing behind. So he's, he's, he's a mantle that, he's an altar that is making impact on the face of the earth. Right now, he's, he will be in Botswana. He was in Canada. He's coming, he's, he's moving all he's around in Africa. At my friend yes. In Baltimore. Yes. Nothing. He's moving, he's a busy man. So you cannot be under such kind of an altar and remain small. It is not, it's not possible. It is, it, it is an error for you to be mentored by somebody who is making impact everywhere in the world and you remain small. You need to just build up your capacity by all means to be able to call somebody who is a lion as your father because you must be a lion as well. You can't be a monkey and call your father a lion. Your father is a lion. So what am I saying? Build an altar. Establish yourself in the presence of God. Remember, an altar is your attitude and the way you find yourself in the presence of God. It is the presence of God that surrounds you, that determines the power and the level of an altar that is around you. God bless you and be with you. We feel an anointing right now. Let's all stretch our hands up to the Lord uh, for, for single people to get married. 
I tell you, last night uh, I was invited to the service uh, where Apostle you were speaking and uh, Apostle Giff you were speaking. I saw you, the song you did at the end was so beautiful. By the way, I want to be in a meeting with you when we go to Zambia. And since yesterday, I wanted to say I look forward to coming to South Africa. And I know you have a lot for me to do there. You'll, yes. you'll work me good, and I'm, I'm ready for the job. We'll, we'll work it. And in Zambia, yes, we're coming. You. And uh, I, 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 you sang that beautiful song, and it was such an anointing on that, such a grace on that, after you spoke, and he took the mic and just walked up singing that song. It was beautiful. I really felt the presence of God. But last night, the Lord spoke to me. He says, no, son, don't go to the beating. Stay here with me. And the whole night, I laid down prostrate. The whole night, watched a few videos, caught up on a couple of phone calls, not much, then I got off, and I was just praying through the night, through the morning, and one thing this morning, the Holy Ghost came over me, began to have me weep about marriages, about marriages, about the right connection with people. There's an anointing, he, he, he's here, and it was right here where I am. The anointing and the presence of heaven is here. You've been single too long. You're never going to fulfill ultimate destiny. Now, I know you've seen everybody that was wrong, and I know what that's like. Can I tell you a little cheeky, as a New York man, for a second, although we're so much in the holy presence of God, let me tell you a little joke. But it's not a joke. It's reality, but it sounds cheeky and funny. There are women that have been after me lined up from here down to the next town if you put them in a single file, and I've withstood all of them and said no. You can, you can not have seen the one, but it doesn't mean that you're not going to see the one. Mm -hmm. And I heard, I was, I was online with Dag Hewitt Mills last night, the great bishop from Ghana. What a man of God. By the way, you could follow his ministry and his teaching, Dag, D-A-G. You, you want to get it? He, I'll tell you a simple way. Dagpreaching.org. D-A-G, preaching dot org and many of his sermons are there he's a brilliant brilliant very heavily anointed apostle and he teaches on very practical life things and spiritual things all in one he's got churches all over the world he's a phenomenal phenomenal servant of god he said i want to pray for people to get married how many single people are here he was in a church in london every half the crowd stood up and they were all waving he said what are you doing father show them here's my prayer and i'm following the apostle Show them the right person. Show the right person who's to be the mate, the help mate. Let no mistake, and I cried in the presence of God in intercession this morning. I was over in the other room here praying, and I, I felt the Lord have me weeping and saying, God, protect all from the wrong one. Keep the wrong one away. In fact, never let it even be entertained because it's hurtful to you. It's a waste of time. You're entertaining something that's inordinate. And the Bible, Paul even talked about inordinate affection. Affection that's not ordained by God. Inordinate means not ordained. Inordinate affection, not ordained by God. You don't want to date somebody. Forget about dating. I want to pray supernaturally that God... You know, the scripture even says, my sister, my bride, in Song of Solomon. It didn't talk about dating in between. It didn't talk about having a few girlfriends and boyfriends along the way. Those are detours. Let's get, let's get past, let everybody get past all that nonsense and get right into the real thing. Father, it just, I just pray with all of my heart and, and with so much passion in me for this. Give people their proper spouse, the helpmate, the right person, the person that is perfect for them, the person that is perfectly ordained to help them succeed. And we claim, according to Proverbs 18.22, that next level of grace and favor that comes when a man finds the wife, when the wife gets hooked with the right man. And we cancel out every wrong relationship, every person that's after people, by lust or demons or witchcraft or manipulation or just not God's agenda. I cancel it in Jesus' name. It will never happen. You, let me tell you, you can fast and pray until your clothes fall off and you turn sideways in the dim light and we can't see you because you got so skinny from your fasting and praying. You will never override the will of God. 
God has a plan. He has a person. He has a purpose. He has a mission. He has a destiny. He has a specific calling. And that thing can only work with the thing that God has put together. Father, it's a mystery. It's even a tragedy how people have remained single for so long. Bring them their mate now. Bring us right now in Jesus' name. Let it not be days from now when the right one will appear in Jesus' name. I am God's prophet. I'm speaking as God's prophet. And you tell me. I want to see holy weddings. I tell you, I'm ready for it, man. I'm ready for this thing. I'm ready for this thing. I've walked a lot of years, even decades with God as a single man. And I don't know what happened to me. It's a mystery. I'm crying this morning over it. God, why? I'm thinking about it the last few weeks, Apostle. Why? But it's the, this thing is going to get solved now. And there's going to be no misstep. There's going to be no mistake. There's going to be no Ishmael. There's going to be no wrong thing. It's going to be the promise of the Rebecca for the Isaac. Beautiful. Amen. The Rachel for the Jacob. Amen. The, Sar the Sarai who got touched by the Holy Ghost and called her husband Lord, even though she was a crazy woman. The perfect one. The perfect one. And I pray for people that are already married. That the, the, the situations you have in your marriage that God will fix. I've never prayed like this. I tell you, I feel it. I'm ready for it now. It's a new season. And this thing is going to get resolved. And everybody that has a desire for somebody that's not yours, just lighten up, be strong, and just accept God's choice. God's choice. There was a man in, uh, a man of God was just telling the story. I was watching him yesterday. Dear powerful anointed vessel in America, a very, very great man of God. And I listened to him often. He, he, he said, uh, uh, an old man became sick in Texas. He had a big church somewhere, and I think it was in Dallas. Or and uh, he, he had an assistant, and the assistant was gunning for that thing to take over. But then on the deathbed of the, of the man of God, the, the God spoke to him and said, it's not for him, it's for this other one a junior guy in the church. He'll be faithful. He'll carry it out. You give the church to him. Yes. Let me tell you, the guy that was the assistant was furious. Mm -hmm. He went on a rampage. He was speaking against them. He tried to divide the church. That's wrong. What he should have just said was, God, give me the grace to say, I accept your choice. This is your servant. If you spoke to him, it's, it's for you to do whatever you want. Mm -hmm. And we need to accept God's choice. Now, I know we have a big, uh, long list of a, a list. I have a list. I have a list I've written it many times. I like certain things. I don't like certain things. Let me not get into the carnality of humanity <laughs> to speak about what those things are right now because we're in the Holy Ghost here. But uh, well, I could also say lawful, but maybe not expedient for the message. But they, you could have a list of all you want. Mm -hmm. Yes? But God has a a perfect one for you. Amen. Let's pray. Yes, Let's pray together. Father, thank you, thank you for grace. that you are going to give this thing to be solved right now, yes, not later, within this year. Mm -hmm. I don't even want to talk about the end of the year. I want to talk about in the next weeks and months, if it can be that quick, because some people are just ready. They're just in need, like the next dimension I'm seeing. Mm -hmm. You know, it's been prophesied to me that they want to make me a, uh, consecrate me as a bishop in the city and as an apostolic father. All this has been spoken, but there's many things going on behind the scenes I don't talk about. Mm. And I thought, well, certain things need to be in place before that. You know, we're building level to level, but certain things, I don't want to just talk about myself, but certain things you can't attain until you're biblically accurate in your life walk. In the biblical economic system, tithes, offerings, first fruits, alms, yes. Offering seeds, yes. But also connected in the right way. The Bible says a bishop should be the husband of one wife, not greedy, wise, and of good report, and a seasoned man, and a, a man has proven and proven. And, you know, there's, so I, I think there's steps that we've missed, Apostle. We, there's steps that have been missed by people. They want to be raised up, but they don't want to pay a certain price. We need to walk it out however God says walk it out. But I prophesy supernaturally. Let me make it easy and not make it. You start giving the rule book. Everybody goes, oh, my God, I have to do all this. Oh, Jesus, I, I repent. Uh, I'm sorry. And then I have to do this and do this. Yes, you do. 
But let me just be a little bit nice and loving and as a father, as a friend. I prophesy supernaturally that God is going to arrange these things for us. Amen. And it's going to be easy because Jesus said what? My yoke is easy and my burden is light. Father, I decree. I just feel, just feel that we pray if you're sick and if you need God's touch and if you are there believing God for anything, whatever it is, there are graces in this house. The apostolic grace, the prophetic, just, uh, just, just stretch and just stretch your hands towards the screen. In the name of Jesus Christ, Father, I decree that let the presence of God meet that man and meet that woman. In the name of Jesus Christ, let the power and the presence of God meet you at the point of your need as you align your life towards the principles of the kingdom. In the name of Jesus Christ, Father, we stand in this studio and we decree that God, there shall be testimonies that will be written down. In the name of Jesus Christ, I attended this meeting that was online and God touched me in this way. Some of you, you receive the power of the word. The word will have enough anointing to change your situation. You need just a word for deliverance. And out of this broadcast, something has jumped into your life. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray that every principality is now being faced by a prince. You are a prince who is taking over that principality that has been ruling your life, your family and everything. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray that you are taking over the devil's kingdom because the kingship crown has been given to you. You have now a new wine skin and you are carrying new wine. In the name of Jesus, the power of God touch you and set you free. Healing, be set free. Healing, healing, healing. I see somebody having a pain on your left, left knee. You've been struggling to walk. Father, May you heal this person right now in the name of Jesus Christ. The other one, you have been in pain of your heart. You've been struggling with it because you quarreled with somebody who is an authority. I want you to, to know that go back and just ask for forgiveness. Just go, I am sorry and forgive me. That pain is going to leave you. God bless you and keep you in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. and amen. The Bible says in, uh, in uh, Mark chapter 11, verse 25, uh, you need to forgive. When you stand praying, decreeing things, Mark eleven twenty three. 23, speak to the mountain, it'll be removed. Mark eleven twenty four. 24, the things I desire, I'll have them. But then whoever you have ought with, you have to forgive them. And uh, I heard a story, Kenneth Hagin, I was listening to his teaching a day or two ago, again, to catch up on some of that uh, old brilliant teaching that I think the church has gotten away from. But guess what? Brother Hagen is in heaven. Mm -hmm. Dr. Hagen's in heaven, but his, his videos are all on YouTube. Kenneth Hagen. Kenneth H-A-G-I-N. You need to look him up and just dive into it. He's a teacher now, and he's going to teach, but a phenomenal teacher. And the stuff he's bringing, he did a message on love, which rebuked me to the core of my being. I'm telling you, I felt it from head to toe. I thought, we've forgotten about a lot of these things, his message on love. But one of the things he said was about healing, there was a woman he was going, somebody he was going to pray for that had a very terrible disease issue, and he said, don't lay hands on them. Just tell them to forgive, mm -hmm. to forgive the person. And the person got on their knees humbly enough and forgave and instantly the disease left them and they were healed. They never needed prayer. Yeah. There was another man who told, a man of God who told a story about his own father that the Lord came and visited him and said, forgive, go back to the pastor that he, his father had a falling out with the pastor. Go back to the church and humble yourself and ask for forgiveness. The man was very sick. He decided he didn't want to do that and he died. Wow. Went to heaven early. He wouldn't forgive. So this is a key that Jesus said, when you forgive, you release yourself from evil. Do that right now, and it'll bring healing. Father, I thank you for the touch of your healing fire touching people all over the world in the coming days. And I want to prophesy that there's, there's healing 
miracles and flows of miraculous healing is going to come through our ministries. Creative miracles, blind eyes opening, cripples walking, people raised from the dead, all kinds of diseases, afflictions. They'll get in the presence of where we are in the presence of the Lord and be touched and healed. Apostle, that day is coming up. It's coming up. It's coming back. It's coming back. The fire of God's going to be released to the nations through us. Wow. Father, we thank you for your grace and your mercy. Holy Spirit, we thank you that you are the one. We thank you, Lord, for intimacy. Holy Spirit, you bring it upon us. You desire that we walk with you, get to know you better. Like the Apostle Paul said, that I may know him in the power of his resurrection. I thank you for resurrection power in our lives, in our ministries, in our businesses, every area of our lives, ministries and families. Let the resurrection power of our Lord Jesus Christ be made known to the world, not to put a man on display, but so that lives can be touched, lives can be changed, healing, signs, wonders, and miracles. And we declare revival power, revival breaking out, not only in Kenya, but in East Africa, the continent of Africa, and other parts of the world. The revival fire is spreading now. The spread of the fires of revival. Father, we know it is not coming, but it's already here. And we align ourselves with your word for this hour, that we will continue to walk in the voice of the Lord for this revival move of God in this very hour. The fires of revival shall not only burn in the lives of people, Father, but it's as we are sitting here today, the prophet, our elder, apostle gift, and the ones in the studio, that the fire, the fire, the fire shall burn, shall burn in our ministries, shall burn in our ministries, and shall burn in our hearts, so that we may execute the will of God to the ends of the earth. God bless you. Well, well, uh, I want to say become a partner. If you're sowing, you make sure you get your tithing life right. And uh, you do that as the Lord's directing you. And also uh, make sure you, you sow a seed into this grace. As you become a partner, I want to give you this book as a gift. If you're anywhere around the world, this is also available as an e-book digitally online and I have also two other books which are uh, in digital uh, e-copy is the benefits of excellence brilliant book and the laws of success which I will be printing soon a new expanded edition of this but this is available as it is now in digital format and I want to say a big love for Kenya those of you here we are Akuna Matata Ubeda Kiwe, Mungu Nemwema, Bon Asafiwe! We're blessed. Love you. Let me kiss the flag. Not that I'm doing anything patriotic, but in, in, in connection to the people. I love you, people of Kenya. You're my people. All right. God bless you. Let's clap unto the Lord. Thank you all. Well, you know, there's no end to what God is saying, but let's just pause here. Share this with everybody. I am Thomas Manton IV. This is Apostle Denver Lewis and Apostle Gift Nyambi from Lusaka, Zambia. And we look forward to coming to these nations. I'm thrilled. I want to see the big animals. I want to see the Victoria Falls. I want to see Cape Town. Oh, my. I want to see uh, also the animals. Let's try to go to the game park and see the animals, too. I love that and eat some good food and have fellowship and release the fire of the Holy Ghost throughout the land because, you know, these nations are key. I see Zambia, South Africa, Kenya, aligned, Nigeria, Ghana, aligned, the, you know, and then the other East African countries, Uganda, Tanzania, uh, even to the Congo and across the middle belt of the African continent from the east to the west. There's movements of God happening here. And it's time, the Lord is saying, for Africa to arise. I wish there was like one of these I can make if we can make it with the whole African continent on it as a flag and wave it. I don't think anybody's done that, but maybe I will. All right? And uh, look forward to many more things online. I feel we're going to do a school of business, school of ministry, 
have many courses, many uh, things from our teachings and brilliant things we're going to be bringing out. God bless you. I love you. Let's blow the Lord a kiss. Blow me one. I'll blow you one. And we say, we say hallelujah. Make it a great day. Gioni Jema, Siku Jema. Praise the Lord. And if it's very late night, Lala Salama, which means sleep well. You are blessed. We are blessed. The Lord is good. Mungu Nimwema. He is the boss. And Father, we thank you for the, your, your outpouring in this studio today. God bless you. Share this with everyone. I'm Thomas Manton IV. The information of how to connect with us is on the screen. And we will talk to you and be with you again on the very next broadcast. We love you. Have a great day.